Has this ever happened to you? You've just finished your shiny new quad build. Everything's set up in beta flight. You plug the battery in, the motors sing their little tune, and then when you arm the quad, nothing. Completely dead. So, you open beta flight configurator, connect to your quad, go to the motor tab, go to test the motors, complete silence. Again, nothing. Well, don't panic. Don't start swapping ESCs or motor wires just yet, especially if you're running AM32 firmware on your ESCs. I'll show you the fix and I'll talk a little bit about why this only happens on some ESCs and not others like Blue Jay. Hello and welcome to the Whirly Bloke channel. With the demise of BL Heli licensing, we've all pretty much moved on to BlueJ and AM32 firmware for our ESCs. BlueJ's still more popular, it's a roughly a 70-30 split, but AM32 is catching up really fast. So, if you're running AM32, have you ever had this head scratcher? Your quad's all built, beta flight is all configured and everything's looking good. Uh, if we go into beta flight and we can see that that is working and we go to the motors tab and if you want to test the motors we just flip that switch there accept the warning move this up and down nothing absolutely nothing and you know that the ESC is alive because when you plug the battery in it plays its little song and dance Everything looks fine, but as you move those sliders in beta flight, nothing happens. It feels like the flight controller's dead or the ESC's DOA, but actually it's neither. Here's the trap. AM32 firmware can be built in one of two ways. Normal D-Shot, which is one-way throttle commands, or bi-directional D-Shot, which also sends RPM telemetry back to the flight controller. And because bi-directional D-shots become so popular recently, most AM32 ESCs come flashed that way by default by the manufacturers. So if you don't enable the bi-directional D-shot option in beta flight, you know, maybe you thought you'd do it a bit later on, your ESC just ignores the signal. Fortunately, the fix is really simple. In the motors tab in beta flight configurator, select D-Shot 300 or 600, whichever you like, and then choose bi-directional D-Shot. You'll have to agree to the changes. Then make sure you've got the motor poles set to match the number of motor poles on your motor. Very simple to count those. And then if you save and reboot, go through its little dance, there we go. We go back to the motors tab, that's all set. Go in here and test the motors. Motor one, motor two, motor three, and motor four. Fantastic, all works. Now, you might be thinking, hang on a minute, I'm running Blue Jay and that never happens to me. And you're absolutely right. And here's the difference. Blue Jay is built on the older 8-bit BL Heli S base it's always happy to accept standard D-Shot. If you leave bi-directional off, it just skips RPM telemetry, turn it on, and it simply adds the telemetry pulses. AM32, on the other hand, is 32-bit and is compiled by each manufacturer, and some versions actually require bi-directional mode to recognize the signal. So, BlueJ, it's always compatible. AM32, it must match beta flight setting. So if your motors spin on Blue Jay, you're absolutely fine. And if they don't on AM32, this is probably why. So that's it, all fixed, very simple. But if you're curious why bi-directional D-Shot isn't just enabled by default in beta flight, well, it's because not all flight controllers can handle it. The older F3 and F4 chips sometimes choke on timing. So beta flight plays it safe. It starts in plain D-Shot and leaves it to you 
to flip the switch when your hardware can handle it. And on modern F7 or H7 boards like this H743 in here, you can and should run bi-directional all day. Even on F405 boards, the Betaflight devs recommend running bi-directional D-Shot with 32-bit ESCs like AM32, typically using D-Shot 300 or 600 for the best performance and RPM filtering. For AM32 users, the cure is just one checkbox, select bi-directional D-Shot. For Blue Jay, it's optional, but it's still worth setting for smoother filtering. Either way, now you know why your motors sometimes just refuse to spin. And if this saved your sanity, let me know in the comments and subscribe for more Whirly Bloke build rescue stories. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.